This is Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the Democratic Socialist from New York's 14th District. On June 2nd, 2021, AOC tweeted the following about her grandmother. Just over a week ago, my abuela fell ill. I went to Puerto Rico to see her, my first time in a year, because of COVID. This is her home. Hurricane Maria relief hasn't arrived. Trump blocked relief for PR. People are being forced to flee ancestral homes and developers are taking them. Okay, let's break this down. Hurricane Maria, notice that she needlessly spelled Maria with an accent mark, hit Puerto Rico back in September 2017. It is now June 2021, four years later, and her grandmother's home still looks like this. Oh, the humanity. In the meantime, AOC makes $174,000 a year as a congresswoman, lives in a condo in the Bronx, and lives in a luxurious Washington DC apartment building in the Navy Yard with a Peloton studio and a swimming pool. A building, by the way, that doesn't contain any affordable housing. And that's hypocritical considering that back in March 2018, she helped to shut down an apartment complex in her district that didn't have enough affordable housing and wasn't cheap enough. These units are not affordable and we know that too. This development is a wealth transfer from working class Americans in this community to the developers and, and investment bankers. But when it comes to her own luxury living arrangements, she's a little more forgiving. Since, uh, since we're always working, I got a place within walking distance. Oh. So the moral of the story, it's okay to trade in your principles for the convenience of a short commute. Am I a gentrifier? Yes, that's how it works. And it was recently revealed that AOC drives a $60,000 Model 3 Tesla that can drive long range from New York to DC. In the meantime, her grandmother is living in squalor. I mean, you'd think that a well-known socialist would believe in the redistribution of some of her wealth, but what do I know? Shameful! The greed! So The Daily Wire's Matt Walsh tweeted to AOC saying, Shameful that you live in luxury while allowing your own grandmother to suffer in these squalid conditions. To which AOC replied, You don't even have a concept for the role that first-gen, first-born daughters play in their families. Of course, she didn't bother to tell us what that role is, but regardless, it's a really poor excuse for not being a good granddaughter and sending over a few thousand dollars to help out with repairs. Instead, she would rather stand on her grandmother's suffering and use it as a soapbox. My abuela is okay. First of all, judging from the appearance of her grandmother's apartment, she doesn't seem okay. But instead of only caring for mine and letting others suffer, great job caring, by the way. I'm calling attention to the systemic injustices you seem totally fine with in having a U.S. colony. Which is ironic considering that Puerto Rico was originally inhabited by the indigenous Tinao people and was first colonized by the Spanish and Christopher Columbus back in 1493, but let's not talk about that. Speaking of socialism, this is Nicole Sanchez, aka Nicolo. You might recognize her from this cringe. Whatever you say. That video, originally posted on TikTok, amassed tens of millions of views. That video alone shot this girl to superstardom. And now this naive little Bernie bro has become a Twitch streamer who has lucrative ad deals with OnePlus, Elgato, and Rockstar Energy. And I'm not hating her for it, go capitalism. Now a year after she posted her original OK Boomer video, she posted an update. Okay, okay. Oh look, it's the infamous Tax the Rich sweatshirt that can be yours for a mere $58. Found on the official AOC team shop and is complained about on Fox News. Kind of a cliche, but still funny. Anyway, on June 1st, Nicolo posted a video on YouTube showing off her $2 million apartment. And you have to wonder, why did she need a $2 million apartment? For this? Seriously? I mean, it looks like a 10-year-old decorated it, but, but taste is subjective, I don't know. Anyway, a tweet re-emerged that might help explain why Nicole Sanchez can afford such an expensive place. Back in December 2017, a Twitter user named Juliana Conda replied to a tweet about waitressing. No one gets into waitressing thinking they'll be rich on tips. They barely make minimum wage. 
Tips are a lot of their pay. Also, who the F doesn't tip? If you can't spare to give at least $2 to your waiter, don't go out to eat. That's just rude. And Nicola replied, get an actual job that pays minimum wage. I'm not gonna give handouts that they feel entitled to because they brought me one drink in my plate. This girl makes the majority of her income from Twitch donations, i.e. tips, from her audience members, but complains about tipping waitstaff. That is some frickin' irony. I just like to shop a lot. And speaking of minimum wage jobs, let's go back to Congresswoman AOC, where she posted a video exposing the fast food corporation known as McDonald's. McDonald's recently announced that they were going to be raising their minimum wage, quote unquote, to $15 an hour. And I think they're, but what they didn't say is that it was only for their corporate locations, which only covers about 5%, 5% of all of the McDonald's across this country. 95% of McDonald's locations are franchises. So AOC is saying that McDonald's announced that they were raising their wages to at least $15 an hour, but didn't say that they were only doing it for their company-owned stores. Except that they literally did say that. For example, the headline in the CNBC article says McDonald's raises hourly wages for company-owned stores. These increases will not directly impact workers who are employed by restaurants owned by McDonald's franchisees. The fast food giant franchises 95% of its US restaurants. But what they didn't say. So one of two things is happening here. Either AOC's reading comprehension is absolutely dreadful, very likely, or B, she's straight up being dishonest to generate sympathy for low-wage workers, hatred for evil corporations, and to push her narrative for a $15 an hour federal minimum wage. And to be fair, it could be a little bit of A and a little bit of B. The United States Congress is not being tricked or duped into thinking that they have raised all their wages to 15. Yeah, good luck with that one, honey. Beyond the federal minimum wage, AOC, let alone Congress, does not have the authority to dictate what a business pays their employees. And I'm here to tell McDonald's directly that you're not going to do this as a PR effort and you're not going to trick us. Oh man, she's telling them directly, guys. I bet McDonald's is freaking shaking in their boots. And we will not stop adding pressure until they listen to their workers and actually fulfill the demands that you all are asking for. Except that McDonald's is being extremely clear about their plans. Where's the trickery? I mean, what does she think is going to happen? She's going to try and demand that they appear before Congress for not lying? Furthermore, no one is being forced to work at McDonald's. In fact, everyone else is hiring. If you want a job, you can get a job, and it doesn't have to be at Mickey D's. And if not, you can always try dancing for tips on Twitch. <laughs> Works for some people. And on that note, that's it for now. Check out these videos that you may have missed. Thanks a lot, YouTube. And be sure to like and subscribe, and hope to see you next time. If there is next time.